Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays and it's time for another Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 update and as ever this series is sponsored by Trefoil.be if you go to Trefoil.be and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout you can get 20% off your uh, service a server hosting service for um, for Minecraft for Factorio for seven days to die and so on and so on so let's get on with the uh, but now let's get on with the show so this is the uh, big improvement I've made in the last stream, and I'm really pleased with this, because this is, this is something we've been working towards for about, I want to say it's about a month, it feels like longer, but I, I, think, I think a month is probably reasonable. So what we've got here is we've got, finally we've got production science and utility science being made. And because of the way we're playing the game, it, the two of them sort of came together more or less at the same time. So let's have a look at the recipes for these. So production science has been the one I've been focusing on, and this, as you can see, takes in um, it takes productivity modules, it takes iron ingots, uranium, vulcanite blocks, machine learning data, and plasma stream, and all of those in, in not not particularly large quantities. It just needs uh, a bit of all of these things, and then it can churn out a decent number. It produces three production science each time it runs, and produces a junk data card as well. But that's just how these things are. And so I've spent lots and lots of time over the last couple of weeks off getting all of the ingredients and all the bits and pieces together that are required for this and the biggest one of those was vulcanite because that required me to go off to an entirely different planet or at least to a moon and start digging up the vulcanite over there and shipping it out so as we've been going, as I got that up and running, and most of the vulcanite, granted, was being shipped down to Norvis for uh, Mark to use for smelting, but some of it was also always being brought over here, up until we had the amount of it we want, anyway. Over on um, Taishakuten, I set it up with... Um, I set the system up down here with two different delivery cannons that are sending out. This one's sending to Norvis, and we'll just keep firing out as fast as it can all the time because Norvis is absolutely voracious and insatiable. It requires all of the vulcanite in the world, and it's still not enough. Where the world in question is this this moon, which isn't isn't very big. So all of the vulcanite in the world, not actually all that much. <laughs> but we have another one here. This one's firing at Norbit, and uh, this one and it's linked up to the uh, to the signals from Norbit that tells us that at the moment Norbit is I, I can't look at it, but at the moment Norbit has enough vulcanite. It's missing some other stuff, but it's got enough vulcanite. So this cannon has gone to sleep and is not firing. However, as the um, as the, the the guns over here, as as the science over here on Norbit starts getting done, will eventually the amount in this chest here will go down below the 1.5k that we've apparently got in it at the moment. The um the gun will start firing and it'll drop in here, go into the goes into the um, uh, landing pad and then gets passed down through the system over here, which has been extended significantly. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But for now, yes. So over here. That meant, actually let's use FNEI because this will give me a bit more information about well, how, how all these things are made. So the productivity modules, so they're being made en masse down on Norvis by Mike. You saw that running, it's working really well, it's producing loads of productivity modules and we could bring them up here by the, I was going to say by the train load but, the, but it's by the rocket load technically. The iron ingots, those are now being made by Mark. So again, got lots of those available. They're coming through. Uranium has been on the uh, on the, um, the, the the train system on the bus, <clears throat> all of that for quite a while now. So I just tweaked that over, started bringing it up. Now we've got plenty of that. That's fine. The vulcanite, sure, it required me to go off to a whole new moon and start exploring things, but that is now it's working. It's available. Machine learning data. <laughs> this one was more of a problem. So machine learning data takes electronic circuits, fine. Blank data cards, mm, needed to make those. Polished data storage subject, yeah. So, so I spent a lot of time in the last stream going through, and I built up this 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 little area here is starting to make all of the all of the bits and pieces that go into making lots of the different machines in space. So it's quite nice that I've been able to set up this sort of tower thing with its own mini bus system going on that's got lots of the ingredients that go into lots of these different machines because there's quite a lot of overlap. If we look at Bio biochem facilities, you can see it's green motors, low density structures, pumps, assembly machines and glass. Sure, this one is big motors and you've got the pumps in there as well. Okay, so it also needs copper cables, pipes and steel, but there's some, some overlap. Up here, it's okay, we need a blue circuits, but also low density structures and assembly machines. So again, some overlap. Um, and for the uh, plasma generator, again, low density structures, pipes, assembly machines and this time heat shield tiles. So there is, yes, there is overlap. between. There's, there's differences between the design recipes, but there is enough overlap that with one, two, three, four, five belts coming up here, all with slightly different things and some cunning shenaniganry like this with, with long handled inserters. I can get all of the I can get all these machines being built off all the same sort of things without having to do a bajillion different little breaks off the bus. And for stuff that's infrastructure, where we're making buildings rather than things that actually get used up as ingredients in science, doing it like this is great because yes, these things will have quite high demand on whatever they're using for a little while while they're building up the machines but then eventually they'll calm down. We'll have our 20 plasma generators, we'll have our 20 um, 
supercomputers or our 50 uh, radiators and then they, these are now all made now at some point I'll come out here and I'll, I'll put in a load more radiators because I'll need a lot more thermofluid and then so these will get used up but then they'll be rebuilt but while they're being rebuilt we're probably not using biochem facilities or we're probably not using um, supercomputers so the system here will probably be able to keep up reasonably reasonably well this is different from things like making thermofluid or cosmic water, uh, sorry, chemical gel, where you've got a steady flow of it being used up by the science production systems. And so there you, you actually want your own private connections to the bus so you can t tell a bit better what's going on and provide more throughput for all of these sort of things. So yes, I needed to make lots and lots of buildings for all of the different things that were needed. So what, what are we doing along here? Well, we're making the, um, we're making the thermofluid because that's needed. Um, and that turns out it turns out thermo, making thermofluid requires heavy oil. So we had a bit of a um, a bit of a debate about this. So the obvious way to get heavy oil and stuff like that up into space is to go well. We'll put it all in barrels. We'll just bring it up, and then we'll unbarrel it over here like this. So we've got we're bringing in in theory we're bringing in barrels of heavy oil, barrels of petroleum gas. We're unbarreling them, putting them into the into the pipe systems where they're going off and being used. And I didn't really want to use barrels because barrels are a pain in the wasp name. So I was trying to avoid that, but it sort of came out to the point where it actually made the most sense because this meant we, the, um, the the alternatives were to um, were to go out and were to go out all the way to um, Kalidas asteroid belt two and start mining up some of these uh, methane ice patches, shipping them over, shipping fish up from Norvis, and then using the so you take you take in the methane ice, you melt it into methane gas. Then the methane gas you combine with bio sludge to get more, get some most of the bio sludge back, and to get a load of crude oil. So you're basically turning methane gas into crude oil, and you are losing a little bit of bio sludge as well. And the bio sludge you make from biomatter potentially, or better, there's a recipe in here somewhere that just uses fish, I think. Yeah, oh, fish and cosmic water. So you can make your 10 bio sludge from 10 cosmic water and and a fish. Or you do it from biomatter and 20 cosmic water, but that's much worse. You get a lot less bio sludge out from that one for a lot more cosmic water. So that's a, that's a worse recipe. So the plan was to bring up all those fish that Mike had been catching and turn them into bio sludge and then turn that bio sludge into crude oil, then refine the crude oil down into heavy, light and uh, petroleum. So yes, that was a thing we could have done, um, but we decided nobody really wanted to go out all the way out to Kalidas Asteroid Belt 2 and get all of that up and running. And it would put quite a big delay in. So we decided probably not doing that. The other possibility was to take coal and somewhere somewhere in here there is there's, there it is there's the coal liquefaction recipe um, which we can now uh, if we so you take the coal and the heavy oil and steam and turn it into more heavy oil light oil and petroleum gas so we could have used that to make the um, make make all of the the oil products we were going to need up in space as well so that was an alternative we didn't have the research for that though and I think possibly we didn't have the research for the methane ice processing let's take a look at the researches. So in order, yes, in order to get coal liquefaction, we would have to have production science up and running, which means we'd have needed to kickstart it with a chunk of, um, of heavy oil and light oil and stuff produced in other ways, probably brought up by barrels. But we wouldn't have, but if we'd done this, we wouldn't have put in the infrastructure for bringing up the barrels. We'd have just brought some up by hand as a kick to, to, to bootstrap it and then gone from there. But it would mean, yeah, so we still, we wouldn't have been able to jump straight in with that. And the other one, the methane ice processing is somewhere else I think I, 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 I'm not sure I mean there's this one this one allows you to melt the methane ice but it doesn't allow you to um, make make the oil from it was it this one yes here so we needed we'd have needed this one as well which is also production science so we could have yeah we again we could have done this one um, but again we'd, we'd have had to bootstrap it first with the barrels so we thought actually forget it let's just bring the barrels up and so we've put in a system down on Norvis that brings in the brings in the oil um, and 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 turns it into and, and turns it into the um, in, in, into the stuff we need. Uh, and that's coming from a station over here somewhere. Yes. So yeah. So we we can we can bring those in. We can barrel it up down here on Norvis. Put it into the rocket. And if we look at, we look in the rocket, we'll see there's quite a lot of there's lube, there's petroleum gas, and there's heavy oil because we're using all of those in in quantity. So these all need to be shipped up. And the rocket's nearly full, so it'll take take off fairly soon um, and bring all that stuff up to Norvis uh, to Norbit. Because up in Norbit, we are in fact running a bit low on some things. Uh, so as you can see, we've run out of those barrels. So we do need to bring some more of them up from the ground in order to process it. So we've got the usual problem here of every so often you realise that something has run out and there's not enough stuff being put into the rocket to cause another one to come up yet. So you, it, it's a little bit problematic. But we, and, and the, basically the way we're getting around that at the moment is just by increasing numbers every time we see something's a bit short until a rocket comes, which isn't isn't really ideal, but it does kind of work. 
so yes, that's an a light enabling us. All of that uh, is enabled, which is really is basically enabling us to make the thermofluid, um, because sulfur, iron, co and copper, and now heavy oil are all being brought up by by the rocket on the bus. They're fed up here into here. Easy, well, fairly easy. However, we did also need um, uh, chemical gel, and that's made from cosmic water and petroleum gas. So that is currently the limiting factor for absolutely everything, as far as I can tell. Um, chemical gel is, is in theory being made here, but as you saw earlier, we've run out of um, we've run out of petroleum gas. There's none in these pipes because we've run out of barrels of it. But once we get some barrels up, this will kick in and it'll start working again. In fact, you know what? Let's launch that rocket, even though it's not full, because doing some wasting. St oh, is that, is that full? No, it's not full. I'm just going to launch it. It's not full, but I don't care because. It, wasting stuff when I'm make, in making a video doesn't matter because I'm not going to save this anyway. So we can now look back up at Norvis Orbit. We will see the rocket come in here. And this gives me a perfect opportunity to actually to talk about the distribution system I've got set up over here. So we've got the standard shopping list based system down here where you put chests in, where we put constant combinators in with negative numbers of all of the things you want. That, and then that, that sends it down to Norvis through through this thing. And then everything that's brought up here is then dumped straight out. So as you can see, there goes there goes the steel. Then we get some of the plastic going and, and so on and so on. It gets dumped out into this warehouse. And I talked about this system before. So down here, we've got a green cable linking this warehouse to this combinator to all of these inserters. I've got some massive, massive negative numbers on here. And then these inserters are passing through anything that's in there that hasn't been wiped out by these massive negative numbers. So if you look in here, you can see it's setting the... Um, what is it's finished or it's okay it's setting setting what the inserter should be passing through and that very quickly dumps out all of the stuff that goes into this warehouse that doesn't belong in the warehouse and as you can see most of it is steel at the moment presumably most of the rest of stuff's been and then now we've got a load of copper coming through so if we look on here yep steel and and, and oh and um, memory card substrates and and so on so everything gets passed through into here then we've done the same thing again where this combinator has a list of all the things that are supposed to be kept in here which is basically science packs Everything else gets passed down to copper and steel and memory card stuff, substrates, passed down to here. Then the steel stops in this one because the steel goes out on this belt. And so on, all the way down, all the way down, on down, 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 down. Same thing, every every step except this one which I haven't programmed up yet because I haven't decided everything that's going in here. So those get passed out and each one of these um, warehouses is, re is responsible for five items because that's the width of a bus section because that's how wide underground belts are with them um, in, in space. So we then have filtered inserters, uh, filtered loaders, sorry, all the way along here, putting all of that stuff out onto these belts so we get a nice steady stream of steel or of low density structures. Or the ones we're particularly watching for, somewhere down here, there are, yes, down here we've got the barrels of heavy and heavy oil and petroleum gas. And eventually, those will be passed out by the system. Eventually it'll find some. Let's let's speed it up a little bit by finding a, trying to find a stack. I can't, I can't, they're all, they're all so far up that I can't see any. There's, there's a heavy oil barrel stack. So put that down there. Funny, but it's funny, always funny business when you're trying to deal with these things from the NAVSAT. So eventually, yes, they'll come down here. They'll be put onto these belts here and flow over to be unbarreled and as you can see we're replacing the belts with the barrels on then with the uh, pipes that have the actual fluid themselves because that seemed like a sensible way to do it. Now the other funny business I've done over here is this bit so um, rocket fuel is extremely um, voluminous it's, it, it's, it's the enormous quantities of it have come up here and this was causing problems with this uh, this this warehouse because it was it had filled up and therefore that was blocking everything from running down here and that is the problem with this system if you ever ask for more than a warehouse worth of stuff in total between all of your items that go into one warehouse then it all jams up and you're having going to have a bad time so what I've done here is passed the excess rocket fuel out into this warehouse and down here we've got these two control systems here both hooked up to this warehouse and we've got this one is passing it out if there's well the number is a bit funny because of the um, because of the massive negative numbers on the um, on the on the uh, combinator here but basically we're saying if there's more than if there's more than 500 in here pass it that way and if there's less than two less than 200 in here pass it back again so we'll always have somewhere between 200 and 500 in here as long as we don't run out completely but any excess will be kept in this warehouse and we've also got these warehouses linked in by red cables as well to make sure that they're counted in the system that's sending the information back down to Norvis I'm not sure what's in oh this is a random miscellaneous stuff warehouse uh, for all the things that basically these are all of the interesting things that I recovered when I salvaged what was up here and what was in the spaceship but haven't had any actual use for so you see we've got some space rail we've got some um, We've got a uh, we've got a beacon that could be quite useful. I might put that in by the um, by, by the science labs later, and so on. There's various other bits and pieces in there that are doing uh, uh, that I'm going to going to find useful, but not just yet. So yes, all of that is then get, gets passed down onto the onto the belts over here, as I've been as I've been saying. 
So and then over here, we are we are still not doing anything over here because we've still not got any of that petroleum gas through because it does take quite a long time for this to empty when a rocket comes in. As you can see, it's got down to most of it has been done. We've, we've, we've emptied out all of this stuff, but there's still quite a lot of stuff that needs to be passed through. But eventually, eventually it will work and it'll all get passed through and we'll get the... Uh, there, there we go. There's some, uh, there's some petroleum gas being passed along. And is there any... Yeah, so eventually it, get, it finds its way through. It gets passed down through here and, and makes its way up the belt bus to be, to be used for whatever it's needed for. So yes, that's making the thermofluid, which we can then chill in this uh, radiate, thermal radiator here. I've got input and output tanks, so this one should be kept at... There's a pump over here that is monitoring this tank and trying to keep it at 10, uh, at, at, at 10,000. Um, so this gives us an overflow for it to come back down the, pipe, down the pipe here and go into this tank when we've got too much of it. But also, this system will allow us to keep... A quantity of it available as long as it runs of course uh, there we go this is this now no, some of the petroleum gas has got through so we've got some um, now stuff is happening so we can bring the uh, bring the thermofluid in chill it down to um this to cool and then bring it down here where it can then be used by by the supercomputers in order to chill them down and allow them to do the do the sciencey stuff they're doing <laughs> so that was a bit of a diversion but now things are starting to work again so we can now bring in and, and now we've got the the uh the rough data substrates, those are being made on Norvis so that we can do them with, so we can make them with uh, productivity modules. I hope we have got productivity modules in there. Let's have a quick check because that is a thing that we want, we want, we want to be productivity moduling these because they're expensive. Yes, we are. These are full of tier twos because that's, that's the best we can realistically make at the moment. Uh, at least realistically make in quantity. So they're being made, they're brought up here where they're polished in this machine. And you have two choices for the um, for the polishing. So if we look at the uh, substrates, we have this this recipe here. So you can make you can make them in two different ways. You can either make them from a rough data storage substrate with cosmic water, and that gets you your polished data substrate. You get the cosmic water back in a contaminated form. Um, but you, and you get some scrap as well. So we're filtering out the scrap down here, that goes down that belt and to be taken away. And the cosmic water, currently we're just putting it into a tank. So this tank is gradually filling up. One of the things I need to do next week uh, is, go is going to be to deal with this. So there's a bit of tidying up left at the moment, but in theory, things are mostly working. So we're making those data cards. The other recipe is this one where you use the rough data storage and chemical gel to just to make that one. However, that wastes 10 cosmic water and 100 petroleum gas every time because you don't get the chemical gel back in any format. Or at least the five cosmic water turns into five contaminated cosmic water, and the and con con contaminated cosmic water can be turned into 99 cosmic water and one. Con so you get 99% of it straight back again just from the cleaning process. You do admittedly get a contaminated bio sludge, um, but then that can be turned into 99% um, efficiency into bio sludge. Uh, which can then be used for as bio sludge, which is faintly, vaguely useful later. So you're not, it's, it's much, it's a much less wasteful process. So 99% of it will just go round and round, will just come straight round again to be reused. The other 1% will at least go off and be used for something else. And you get scrap out of it, which can be turned into resources, so it's not entirely wasted. So that's quite nice. Then we are making the uh, the memory card. So this is this you will remember, hopefully remember from the 0.5 playthrough being the bane of my existence. The sheer number of memory cards you get through later on in the game is frankly ridiculous. At the moment, it's not not an issue because we've only got like one machine two, using them, uh, so it's it's okay at the moment. But we are churning those through, and then over here we are making them into the machine learning data which is required for making the productivity science. So that's the machine learning data. The plasma stream was the other thing I had to do. This one happily was quite easy because I'd, I'd done lithium before I went off to Taishikutan. Uh, so we've now brought the lithium up here. It's being fed into a um, into this uh, plasma generator, which, okay, it's run out of chemical gel because that's a problem as we've seen. But if it did have some chemical gel, it would make me making the plasma and then we would have everything we needed here. That would then be able to. So we've got all of the stuff being taken in here. These, this was really nice actually. I, I'm quite, I, I quite like the way this looks. I just had this, these four belts pouring out of the, out of the, um, the system over here, out of the, the, um, uh, the warehouse that they're all kept in. So we've got the prod mods, the uranium, the vulcanite, and the iron ingots. This flood straight down here, and then boom, 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 boom. All four of them get split off, brought up here, and just dumped straight into this machine because that's basically why they've been brought up here. <clears throat> I've done the proper splitting and things down here because I might want them later for something else. You never know. It seems fairly likely that something else will need them. So I split them off and... Um, yeah, they're being brought up here, turned it, and then turned into the production science. And as you can see, it is working. We are getting science being made. Um, now, science comes with a side order of um, of junk data cards, which are being they're being filtered off down here, as I said. And at the moment, they're just where what am I doing? 
that's 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 the science the junk data cards are just being put onto this belt here and again that's another thing i need to deal with later because you know as i say it's a bit proof of concept here at the moment it's a bit quick and dirty a bit bit hacksy uh, so over here yeah we're making the production science it produces three science and one da junk data card over here we're making the uh, utility science which produces four and four and that's why this side is jammed up much more quickly but those are both getting fed away down the chute that goes all the way along the belt across the bottom here and then it's being brought up. So as you can see over here, we do now have production and utility science packs being made available to the science facilities. And that, I feel, is a massive achievement. Uh, we haven't actually done any science with them yet, but they are in here and ready to be used. And the reason we haven't done any science with them yet is because we're thinking that actually, these yeah, these things are great. We've, we've got this step done and that's really nice, but... If we do that, if we do a little, if we do a little bit of an improvement, uh, if we go in and we start making the space science labs, um, which we have, we have basically all the stuff for this. The lithium sulfur batteries I shall talk about in a moment. But it takes these advanced labs. It takes uh, low density structures, processing units, big electric motors. We've got all of those. Then with these thing, uh, these things, you can put more, um, you can put more modules in them. So these only take three modules. These take, I, I want to say six. I'm not 100% certain, but it's definitely more. <coughs> And putting more modules in means you get more free science. So at the moment, we've got a productivity boost of 18%. If it is six, then we get productivity boost of 36%. And that means we get more than a third extra free science. And given that making science packs is expensive, this is really, this is really, really valuable and very, very worth having. So um, yes, I'm, we're, we're going to try and upgrade these, uh, this, the science labs to a better one, and then just leave that running uh with with and fill it up we'll, we'll fill it up completely with tier three productivity modules as well and if i remember correctly it'll run at um instead of running at a research speed of three which this one runs at plus 32 percent bonus it'll run at a speed of 10 plus presumably a 32 percent bonus so it'll run at a speed of 13 so we actually won't need it we won't even need as many of these so we'll be able to have we won't so that'll mean we'll use a lot fewer modules and it'll just be generally much more efficient and a better and a better system in general so we'll yeah looking forward to getting that up and um and properly productivized and just generally generally better as i say so that's production science then utility science was so in theory i, I we were discussing this a little bit on stream and i went in and i said well Utility science is now trivial. I just drop in a machine. I pull in. I've already got the machine learning data. I've already got the thermofluid. I've, uh, we've got cryonite. We've got efficiency modules. We've got belts. Okay, we've got all the ingredients for belts. I'll make them on site because that's just that's just sensible. Rather than tra dragging the belts all the way over here on another belt, let's just make them on site, dump them straight in. And we've got blue circuits. Simple. Um, Somebody then pointed out, I think it was Tristan, then pointed out that, yes, okay, we do have all of those things, but that's only because we've been parallelizing because we're doing it as multiplayer. So, yes, okay, while I was off on Taishakutan getting the Vulcanite, Tristan was off on Drakit getting the Cryonite. If I'd gone, if I'd gone in with a production science, I'd have then gone, ah, oh, hell, I need Cryonite. That means I need to go off to another planet, so I'll, I'll now need to do that. So, actually, yes, it's not quite, they're not quite as, they're not quite as, it's not quite as trivial as I was making out on stream. Also, with the um, the efficiency modules, sure, we uh, we had Mike making bucket loads of those. Now, okay, the rate it probably uses them up at, it's not going to be too difficult to make it, make the efficiency modules for this. It wouldn't have been difficult to make the productivity modules for this either. It would have been like two two machines to, um, put, just putting the stuff together, probably down on Norvis for for efficiency, of, for logistical efficiency. But it's again, it's pretty straightforward. But again, somebody had done that for me, so it was even easier. Uh, the rest of it, though, the, the the blue circuits and the uh, and the machine learning data would definitely would have just been there because from doing this one, and and so would the thermofluid. Possibly also the other the other thing I could have considered is I might have done it the other way around because most people would probably focus on utility science because that's the one you need for logistics, and everybody is obsessed with logistic getting the logistic system up and running fully, getting the blue chest, purple chest, green chests. Um, so that a lot of people would focus on this one first uh, rather than the other one. Which is not not. It, I mean, it's a valid valid approach. The I'd say having the logistics system fully upper, operational um, is is valuable, definitely. But I was obsessing a little bit over the coal liquefaction, which I've turned, ended up not using. So um, it was a little bit irrelevant, if we're being honest. But never mind. I've got it's it sort of it's um yeah. But if but if I'd done it that way around, then I'd have got the thermofluid for this and for the machine learning data, which would have been a nice sort of. To the, it would have been a nice overlap for the two things would have, would have, been, would have come together and then I've gone oh okay for production science there's another there is another thing I need to do I need to make plasma okay so I'll put that down oh that means I need to make lithium I'll have to go off and make that as well so yeah if we hadn't been um, if I'd done these in the 
probably slightly more predictable order and I hadn't had um, friends putting together some of the other stuff for me like going off and getting the cryonite then actually the go going in it, it wouldn't have been a oh well these two these this, this one's now trivial because i've already got all the stuff i need for this one so yeah i think the the uh, that makes it makes a bit more sense when i when i started to consider it that way as i was saying i had i um, i had a, i decided to build the belts over here for a couple of reasons one is because having a belt of belts coming from all the way over here where they're being made just seemed a bit ridiculous and it only takes like four three four ingredients including the lube the lube was honestly the hardest because i had to put in all this long pipe to get, to get it all the way down from over here which is the last place it was being used um but that wasn't too bad so we got that 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 that, that up and running i thought i'd do it over here the other reason is because throughout the entire stream i was very short of belts and uh, scaffolding i ran out of low density structures so many times so i mean the number the number of them i've been requesting has just been going up and up and up and what are we on now about eight thousand probably um yeah, six we're requesting them six thousand at a time uh, just because i've been churning through them and the steel at a crazy rate um because building up this the scaff is the scaffolding which is being made here i even fill this up with speed modules just to get it being built a bit quicker as you can see over here it's, it's actually it's only one one of each so that's not so bad but it adds up when you when you start making massive massive quantities of it and then over here these belts take um low density structures two steel plates again i was churning through a lot of those to make all of this and when it, when you consider that this area i don't know how big this area is um but it's let's let's have a quick measurement actually so from from here to here is about 250, call it 250 um, long, and it's, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to measure the width uh, easily. Let's do that and say, so it's it's 30, 33 plus another, we'll call that about 50 or 60 tall. So you can you consider that that's 200, 250 by 50, so that's that's about 12 and a half thousand across. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of the... Um, uh, scaffolding to, I've, I've had to make in order to make this and that's not including the bit up here for the uh, for the top parts of the bus and all this stuff going up here so yeah we've used we've used probably 15,000 space scaffolding along here so that's that you, you can see how what I, what I mean when I say we had to bring up a lot of stuff in order to get this built up and running uh, it was a it was a big deal and I was forever short of it but now we, things have calmed down a little bit because I've stopped building but then next next session, I'm going to start building again. We're going to need a thing over here to deal with the uh, the junk data cards. We're going to need a thing to deal with the uh, contaminated cosmic water. It's it's a big process. We need we need enormous quantities of everything just to get this to work. So um, yeah, that's um, that's that's definitely a thing. It's, it's it's a very very hungry hungry thing, and the steel gets used for everything and then all, all these things up here use have been using it in massive quantities as well so yeah big throughput issues there copper was a shortage as well for at one point i think that was just because i hadn't set the number over here to be big enough i've now bumped that up to ten thousand. so now copper is okay we have lots and lots of copper in here we're we're okay for that but for a while it would that that was a, that was a problem and until i until I, as i say i sorted it out so next time yes as i said the um the things i need to do well there's still there's still a few th improvements that could be made out on taishikuten from uh, out there but i'm not, i haven't touched that that's not going to be done for a little while until somebody has a reason to go out there for well maybe to bump put in better efficiency mod uh, productivity modules who knows but there are yeah there's possible reasons to go out there um and as i say i need to deal with the the outputs from this i've also got an issue with um from the the unbarreling process here uh, where the steel is being produced by this by the unbarreling um, and crushing of the barrels a lot quicker than it's being used up. So I've, I've chucked in in now while I'm testing. I chucked in this um, this steel chest here, and that seems that's 309. That seems to be filling up, which is not good um, because we're not we don't seem to be using the steel particularly quickly down here. Some of it's being used for pumps to make machines here. Some of it's being used to make the belts here that go into the into the uh, utility science, but it's not it's not enough we're going to need more steel to be used up but i'm hoping that this that, that putting it chucking in a chest here is going to provide enough of a buffer that by the time it becomes a problem this belt bus will have extended and there'll be more stuff using steel out here somewhere um, i'm not sure what that'll be but i'm fairly confident that steel is going to get used in large quantities so we'll uh, yes that's that is a thing that is a concern need to bring up a lot more of the oil stuff in the barrels so these these ones need to be changed they can't, they can't be a hundred they will make them well, let's make those a thousand instead um that'll put in a lot more stuff into the rocket in fact if we, if we now have a look quick look at the rocket you'll be able to see how the system works so having done that we now have yes a steady stream of um 
uh, purple and and brown barrels. That's the, the petroleum and the uh, and the heavy oil barrels being fed out from here into the into into the rocket. So that's now filling up with these barrels. It's going to be a long time till the rocket launches, but never mind. Uh, we we don't care about that right now. I also need to have a good check over all of the uh, utility and production science. Just make sure make sure everything is is working properly it's the all these little things where i've got outputs that's byproducts that aren't being dealt with properly that sort of thing all those little things that need to, will need to be dealt with i've also um also worth mentioning is that scrap i mentioned earlier that is being properly dealt with that's coming down this belt over here it's going underneath here and it's being put into this rocket and then when this rocket fills up it'll take any spare rock cargo rocket sections and space capsules back down to norvis and down on norvis we have a landing pad here and this can deal with everything that comes in that way. So we've got um, scrap being fed out down here, which goes down the um, down a chute and to be fed off into, into down down with the bus and just taken away to be to be reprocessed. The uh, rockets, the, the stacked rocket sections, come down here into this chest to be unstacked and put back into the system. The um, <clears throat> what else? What else do we have going on around here? Oh yeah, the rocket capsules will come out here, be fed over here, back into the again back into the rocket. So all of this will keep the. Uh, should keep the whole system running and just and just allow the parts to be passed round and round and round. Um, so one, we did run into a massive shortage of rocket sections in the in the previous stream. It turned out the main reason that was happening was because we're not building them particularly quickly down here. But also I'd stockpiled about 350 of them up in uh, in in Norbit in that rocket. So I just sent the rocket down. It was half, it was only about a third full, but I sent it down anyway, and that gave that meant we had a load to work with. And um, there are other places using them, which I shall show you in a moment. But yeah, they're. Um, we, we, we're, we're, we're trying to we're trying to keep the re rocket sections being recycled because that's sort of the point of them. Otherwise, they're horrifically expensive. Uh, oh yes, and I, I, I um, one of the rockets crashed on its on landing in in, in Norbit, which is incredibly unlucky because when you're flying as far as Norbit, the landing chances is it's over ninety nine percent. So you should be pretty safe launching rockets to Norbit, but apparently not. We uh, we managed to crash one. So I, I, t I told um, Mike to go over and to tell the rocket off, rockets off and tell them to be a bit more careful. So he's put in a motivational little bit of text down here next to the, next to the rocket silo telling it to, well, to, to fly better. So we'll see if that actually works. Um... And what's quite nice about this actually is the um, because there's an offset between the letters, my eye, uh, which he's done to center them against each other rather than for this particular reason, I believe, I assume. But because of that, it means my my eye doesn't try to to uh, don't dead open inside it, and it re I, I read it properly um, as as it's intended to be put, which is a, a nice coincidence, should we say? So that's everything I've been up to. I hope you've been enjoy. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really does help me uh, help me grow the channel and get the uh, the footage out to more people who would be interested in seeing it. So let's now move on to the second part of the video. That's where I talk about what Tristan's been up to in the last, in the last, um, st during the last stream. So as usual, he's been doing some messing around with trains. So as as we've mentioned before, there are there's lots of things being made by uh, Mike and Mark over in the in, in in the massive factories over here. So we've got the, um, for example, over in Module City, we've got stations that fill up with Tier One productivity modules. Uh, some tier threes as well. Don't care about those so much. Tier tier one and tier one um, efficiency modules. Uh, in in the smelter in uh, Mark's new smeltery system, we've got over here. We've got all of these ingots, these iron ingots that I've been needing for science. So Tristan has set up an interesting system of trains and pulleys over here, where we've got a couple. We've got um, these two. We've got this train stop here, where the trains can pull in, and then anything that gets unloaded out of the train will be dumped straight into the rocket. Uh, this rocket, the one that goes up to Norbit, it, it goes underneath this one um, because this one's just kind of in the way and probably shouldn't be there. We should, probably, we may remove that at some point. But that then dumps any sort of bulk things that are being brought by, brought on the train system, rather than coming over on the on the, rather than being pulled off the bus, come over by by train to here and get dropped off here. Now the way this system works is it's connected into the same signal that's coming down from Norbit saying, "Hey, this is the stuff we want." Uh, so here we've got on this one we've got. You can see all of the things that are, that are in Norbit as the positive numbers, and if I make the user interface a little bit smaller, uh, smaller I said, that's the other, that's the other way, jeez, I think we're short of those barrels of petroleum gas, I think that's minus, six, yes, that's minus 620 and so on going down at the bottom there, so most of the stuff we're not actually short of at the moment, so this is a rather bad example, but the point is that when we are actually short of something, it'll appear on here as a negative number, so that's then getting fed all the way up the, along this red cable, all the way up to here. Uh, there's some shenaniganery happening here. Oh, this is a this is a delaying system, I think, to stop the signal being passed through too quickly, so we don't get a, an extra train sent out just as the rocket's launched. Why he hasn't used this signal down this bit down here? Why? He's, yeah, what he should have done is not taken it off 
this cable. He should have taken it off of this one um, because this is actually uh, this one is delayed by the rocket being by the amount of time it takes to build a rocket, which is long enough for the rocket to fly and therefore should be enough. So I'll point out to him that he should have done that. But what he's doing up here is feeding the signal back and forth and back and forth and back and forth through here. So it's being multiplied by one uh, nine times. Just delay it by nine ticks and no, oh, I don't know. The shenanigans. Shenanigans are afoot anyway. And this means that up here, this is then being fed up to all of these stops, up train stops up here, where we are then feeding that into the, into the trains. And this train, and the trains in here are going, um, do I need to go and get, uh, no, no, wait, this and this, they're sitting here going, right, I'm, I'm full of, I'm, I'm full of the, the thing, the particular thing I need. As you can see, it's full of um, speed modules. And then it's watching for a, a less than zero on the circuit network, which means we are short of that thing up in Norvis, Norbit. And when it gets that less than zero, this train will then go from here all the way down to here and unload 160 stacks. That's, in this case, that's, uh, what, 8,000 uh, speed modules into these warehouses. That 160 stacks will get dumped into the rocket and taken up into Norbit, where it will last for a very, very long time. Because 160 stacks of stuff is it's rather a lot. And over here we have trains doing that for the speed modules, for the productivity modules, for the, for the uh, iron ingots, because those, those are all the things that as we we're talking about we need for all the science packs up in, uh, in Norbit. We've then got this one which is doing it for the efficiency modules, but there aren't enough of those in the station yet for the train to have gone off to go and get them. So the reason it's got the uh, rocket buffer station in here twice is, the, is it goes from, after it's dropped it off, it'll go back to the rocket buffer and wait in the stations here. So this is a waiting area. Then when there's enough efficiency modules available, it will go over there, pick them up, and return to the rocket buffer. It will sit there until they're needed in Norbit, and then it will put them into the rocket. So it runs round and round in the loop here until to, just to make sure that everything is provided properly. And yeah, that should should work, I believe. Um, and so far it has been. We've been getting decent quantities through. The only problem is it's a little bit hard on the uh, supply system because we've had two train loads of all of the modules get taken away and the modules they're not being built that quickly so having two train loads suddenly be yoinked like this is a bit of a shock to the system should we say that's why that one is that's why this train is empty and what are you doing you are oh you're you're this this one is one that hasn't been used yet so this one is just waiting is spare and can can can, uh, can come along and and, and we can when, when we need another train load of something we can program it in here and maybe we should start doing that with steel in fact a sensible thing to do would probably be to start bringing steel ingots up to norbit and then chopping them up into um steel sheets up the steel plates up there in Norbit and just have a steady flow of those bit and going around like that that would probably be a much better way to do this I should probably um, start configuring that setting it getting it set up maybe that can be another thing to do next time I think I'll get that set up and programmed in uh, Tristan has done some minor tidying up type uh, shenanigans as um, work as well so for example little things like over here there was a um, there was a problem with the uh with the this this, this is battery town where he's making uh we're making making what are presumably lead acid batteries because we've got sulfuric acid going in and iron and copper and hmm i don't know i wouldn't like to say what sort of batteries these are supposed to be but they take iron copper and lead acid any, uh, and sorry iron copper and sulfuric acid anyway and it spits out a, a steady stream of batteries there was a problem with the um the limits on the iron station down here so that's been fixed good um, he's improved on Dracket. He's improved the, uh, the, the the productivity modules in the pulverizers. Uh, where are his pulverizers? I don't know this system quite as well because it's not mine. Oh, here we go. Here. So he's pulver he's put tier two uh, efficient uh, productivity modules in all the pulverizers. Well, most of the pulverizers along here, and he's put in a, a system here that's monitoring something. Um, Oh, okay. So yes, he's got a high right. He's got a high priority feed coming through here. So if there's if he's using up all of the um, uh, basically, basically, this this is set up to make sure the machines with the um, with with the uh, if, if, if productivity modules are used first. But if there aren't enough of those running, um, then we can start running the um, these machines as well, uh, even though they're less a bit less productive. I'm not sure. I'm not sure entirely. This seems a little bit odd doing this on the out, uh, on the input. I feel it should be done on the output over here and say if there's a shortage of the cryonite ore coming out, then allow these machines to kick in. But yeah, um. It, it, Maybe it'll it probably work like almost as well. This is this is so this is this is saying. Oh, okay, actually, no, maybe maybe not because I've, I'm forgetting that this is a free and unlimited resource. So the the way that the way this is working is he's saying if there's a shortage of the resource, then start it running. Then 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 if there's a short. 
So what he's saying here is, is if there's a shortage of the resource coming in, then stop the less productive machines from running. But if we've got plenty of it, because it's free, nobody cares. Let's just run all of the machines and just churn as much of this out as we can. So okay, actually, given, given yes, given that the input is a free resource that's only limited by t um, amount can be produced, produced by time. This makes doing it on this side makes sense. If it was a normal resource, you do it on the out. You'd watch the output and say, okay, we, we've got a bit of a shortage. I guess we'd better run at full speed. But as long as these machines can keep up with demand, then there's no point in running them. This is not this is not a normal resource. So yeah, that that actually makes sense. I um I take back but that, that back the aspersions I was casting on his uh, his designs here. He's removed that belt I was complaining about that goes around the um the uh, the belt factory apparently uh, so down here yes there was a weird belt that was snaking in, in and out around here to to unload all of the um, any any belts that might be in storage but now we've got these yellow chests set up properly it's all, all this out all now now looks much tidier and much nicer uh, we are apparently well there's some weird oh okay these are these are imbalanced there's 1.6 thousand 1.6 thousand on either side that this is just a little bit weird then having them pass around like this maybe eventually it'll balance up I'm it there do seem to be fewer yellow Yellow, fewer blue belts being passed around the world. I don't know. There's, it's just a little bit weird, but it doesn't really matter. I explained how these balances worked in the last in the last uh, last week's video, so we won't talk about that too much. But that, yeah, that weird belt is gone, so this now looks a lot neater and a lot tidier, even if the side bits are a little bit crammed in. He says he's, he says he's tidied the warehouses of shame. Now I think that must be just the sort of the ongoing process of, of, of trying to keep them tidy, because if we look over here, there's still a lot of nonsense in both of them. Lots of ammunition, some wood. Um, there's Lots of steam. I suppose the steam engines will never go anywhere because we don't have anything to do with those. There's there's a lot of miscellaneous stuff in here, but um, he's he's apparently done a bit of tidying of those. Ah yes, red blue circuit town over here. This is the mistake I was commenting on last time that I said I was going to fix, and then I completely forgot about my to-do list, and so I didn't. But these belts here, these undergrounds have been upgraded to red, which means they reach all the way across this uh, railway, and now we've got a nice system. Of, of the, the silicon is starting to flow through here properly again. He's also gone through and done lots of balancing on lots and lots of the unloading stations. So now, as you can see, these are reasonably closely balanced. What the way this works is this divides the. Um, uh, the number of the, it looks at the total amount in all four of the warehouses divides it by five which is one more than the number of warehouses and then tells all these belts to only output if they've got greater than or equal to the average the the number that isn't actually the average but would be the average if there's one the, the, yeah the number that's a bit less than average so in theory as long as they're all balanced all of these will flow all of the time uh, even if there's little imbalances, they'll all flow all of the time. But if one of them gets crazily out of out of whack, because as we all know, these um, these lo loaders ha play favourites. So, for example, it was always taking from this these two at the top here. Then this one would get emptier and emptier to the point where eventually it would have less than a fifth of the amount that's across the total stations. And then these three would uh, then this one would stop outputting, and only these three would. So then it would be this this system would be forced to then take from the other other loaders instead. So it keeps things a bit more balanced. We've had to implement that on lots and lots of the stations because it turns out load, yeah, using loaders as balancers actually a really bad idea. It just doesn't work properly. So, so we've got rid of that system. We've now got it being a bit more, a bit more sensible, working a bit, bit more nicely. It should, should, should be much better like this. Uh, he's moduled the green circuit. So we had a shortage of green circuits, which is now completely fixed. I think this might have been because we we're making enormous quantities of. Um, modules and modules are very heavy on the on the green circuits in particular and probably and other circuits too and i think there was something else that was demanding huge quantities of green circuits so he's come in here he's put he's um moduled these up quite nicely so we've got um we're using tier twos because those are the ones that we can make in it's unlimited in inverted commas in massive quantities so we've got in here we've got two productivity modules to bring it up to a plus 12 percent productivity boost and then we've got two um speed modules to get rid of the speed penalty from the productivity modules and also give a bit of a speed boost so we're running at plus 30 percent speed so these are running now they're running 30 percent faster and they're producing an extra 12 percent of, of, of stuff so we're getting about we're getting an extra 40 percent out and then there's some sort of funny sh math sh based, based shenaniganry it's going to go on with the um because there's multiple steps to this and and the and we haven't really thought through the productivity module so this is no longer a perfect ratio but i don't think we actually care he's also upgraded all of these all of these belts to blue belts which means we can pass the uh, the uh, belts the the finished circuit through much more quickly and we've now got loads and loads of them here as, as discussed so that's going well um he's put in some limits on cargo rocket sections that are getting set over set over to the uh, spaceport which i shall talk about next time um by putting by connecting all of the belts together 
and then presumably saying only pass through when there's less than about uh, a number on, on that belt. So this is being passed through to here, the, the, where this one is stopped, if, it, if there's anything on the belt. So, <laughs> yeah, so we can only have one rocket section going through here at any any to any given time um it's going to be a little bit more than that because there's a load of underground belts here so we'll have a it'll pass one through and then when it when that one gets to here it'll put another one in and if the second one gets to here before the first one's come out of the bottom here we'll get a third one in um then we probably won't get any more until the three of them have come all the way down here into the spaceport so yeah that's going to um put a bit put the brakes on there a little bit which is make, makes a lot of sense um, and now, so he's here. His his list is not in in priority or excitement level order because he's also done something quite big and interesting over here, where this looks this this may look very very familiar um, because it looks a lot like Battery Town, and it is Battery Town. It's just Battery Town 2.0 because this is making lithium sulfur batteries, which take in sulfuric acid, lithium, and copper and make lithium sulfur batteries. As you can see, it's it's exactly the same system, just with a different recipe and different ingredients going in. So we've got lithium being brought in here and. And instead of iron, another than, actually that's the only difference. We're bringing in lithium instead of iron, and then telling it to make a different type of battery. Those are being produced here and being stocked up in massive quantities. And that is why I was saying earlier that when I start trying to make the space science labs, it's okay that it requires lithium sulfur batteries because we've kind of got those already. So that's why I was saying that. And then we're going to be using those for a few other things as well, I imagine, but I'm not quite sure what off the top of my head just yet. But you'll have to come back next time to find out because I don't know. The final thing he's done is we, we had a massive power problem at the end of the last stream. So um, rockets weren't launching, signals weren't being transmitted. It was all a bit sad. We uh, so we had um, we we're using two point something like two point four gigawatts and only capable of generating one two point one. So at the moment we've had we've done some emergency uh, power saving measures, which I'll talk about ne uh, tomorrow. But uh, for the time being, Tristan also slapped down some extra solar ar ar arrays, probably like like this one. I don't know if it is this one, but he slapped down some more, and that's got us up to two point two gigawatts of generation capacity which is is better it's got things working but we're still going to have some issues so we need we need to fix those that's an important thing for next time but in general the system is essentially working we've got lots of stuff coming out of it we've made more new science packs that's going really well so please come back and join me tomorrow when i should be talking about uh, what mike and mark have been up to and then come and join the stream on monday when i should be tidying up all this stuff and getting things working a bit more neatly and we'll be we'll be spending some time going through and and um I think, the I think the term in, in programming circles is dealing with technical debt. So all the things where we've just gone in and cobbled something together and it's a bit naff, we'll be going through and fixing that up, making it work properly, sorting it out, cleaning it up, tidying it, making it work, making it work nicely. So that should be... Um, that should, should go quite well. There'll also be another stream on Wednesday. That'll be me playing Dyson Sphere program. I'll be uh, continuing with wherever I've got to on that. As of as of making this video, I'm a stream behind on that one, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing because I don't know what I've already done. But I'm sure it'll be very exciting and it'll probably be involved lots of shortages of resources because that's what always happens in this sort of game. <laughs> as I say, please check out the channel sponsor. Treefall.be will host your servers for um, uh, for Factorio, for Minecraft, and so on. If you use the code LawrencePlays when you check out, then you'll get 20% off, uh, off your first month. And there is a link in the description to allow you to go over there. There are videos coming out on the channel as well. So we've got some um, GTA ones coming out on Thursday. Thursdays at the moment. They're coming out every Thursday at least uh, at least for as long as I've got them made and I seem to be doing quite well at that at the moment so um, please check those out. If you're, if you're really enjoying them make sure you're a channel sponsor because then you'll get access to them a week early. That means either be a YouTube member, a Twitch subscriber or drop in a donation on Ko-Fi. The, um, the, uh, the link for which is also in the um, so, so somewhere on the channel so I should probably put it in the, in the uh, video description as well. And I'm also making, I'm starting to make more Factorio tutorials as well. Those come out on Tuesdays when they're ready. There was one came out last week. Um, there'll be one coming out probably not, um, well, it came out actually the week before for, for supporters again. And uh, hopefully there'll be another one coming out fairly soon as well, because uh, those are always very popular videos. So I think that's everything I have for you today. I hope you're enjoying the uh, new outro showing off the new science things. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.